So Chiso hang out on the red for this particular one. And already the bands are looking very strong. Mr. Fa Callista rise their band away from the Chiefs mm. with the Echo and the Zillion band yeah. away from DFM. Uh, mistake in not banning the alley here, I think. I said backstage that TF Callista Alley is probably what we're going to see banned. Um, we see the TF and the Callista, but Rise, no idea why they were banned. The Rise Swift has played it a number of times to very little effect. And unless they first pick Alley here, I think this is a, a massive drafting mistake. It was nearly banned by Chiefs. We'll see if Detonation Focus and we do want to pick the Alistar away. But again, kind of weird to see nearly banned out from Catch. It is a strong jungler, and that's a strong pick from DFM. They will take the Alistar. Yep. Okay, so they have planned ahead. Um, we get the Trindamir hover once again. Whee! I wonder whether or not he ever gets tired of doing that. <coughs> certainly get tired of watching it. I don't think he does. <laughs> I mean, like Nunu Vladimir as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When will it stop? I've actually enjoyed that every time they've done it, to be honest. Yeah. So um, we'll see what they go with here. All the top laners are up. Poppy, Maokai, Nautilus, uh, other than Echo, of course. Um, I'm expecting an early Maokai pick again, I think. I don't think they prioritize the Poppy that highly. And there you go. Yep, take Kindred away as well. Kindred Maokai, actually those two picks for the Chiefs. We talked about it, one jungler being banned away. Graves is up though, is maybe the most obvious thing. It's These have been the trio of junglers we've looked at, but Graves seems to be the most successful. Absolutely, I mean, just last game, um, oh you, saw, yeah, you saw <laughs> PvP Stahos uh, carrying once again on Graves, and, and I can't help but think that maybe some of these other teams haven't learned him because he's so strong. Art, like, yeah. Yep, well, they Catch, pick him up. Picks it up straight away. Definitely not bad into the Kindred either. We'll see if Spooks can replicate some of his success on Kindred though, as Lucian. Once more will be the uh, fallback AD carry pick. Pretty much everyone's gone back to this whenever something like Callista isn't available. Dead FM are uh, uh, drafting, I think, very well, but they're drafting to deny their opposition. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing that is dangerous with that is um, that you, you sometimes don't draft to your own strength. So you see the Callista ban and then the Lucian takeaway. So then, as we were saying before, Radiant needs a mobile AD carry. They've taken both of the good ones away. Caitlyn, okay. Yeah, and he has to fall back to Caitlyn, right? Caitlyn Thresh is actually the lane here, so Ejim will go back to Thresh, continue to play more of a proactive support here with Alistar banned away. I mean, Caitlyn, probably quite good in the meta. I know you've been kind of a fan of it as maybe a sleeper pick moving up the ranks, but uh, Net's kind of a disengaged tool, but it's no Lucian, it's no yeah. Callista. I prefer Net used as an offensive tool. Mm -hmm. I think Net crit is a really nice mechanic. Curious that they would go for their AD carry pick there when they saw the Lucian already locked in. Um, I think picking something like the Lissandra would have been much better. Lissandra has an 80% win rate in this tournament at the moment. Uh, extremely strong pick. She has hard engage. She has wave clear. She has teleport flanks. Like she has everything you could possibly want. And yeah, for what it's FM worth, though, the one time Lissandra lost was against the Chiefs. The That's true. They may have the strategy in place, not the detonation focus. Me with the Lissandra look any weaker because I think that's the. The flex where they're not just denying, they're just outright picking for themselves. And looks like Saras will pick that up for himself here. It looks like also a tank top laner, no, no massive surprise. Peter Pong going to go back to tanks rather than maybe take the Fiora. And it is Nautilus with paired in with Lissandra. So we'll see what Swiffer has prepared here. Because with uh, Rise and Twister Fate band away, and with Lissandra now taken, I think Chief's probably suspected this. Swift is going to have to go to fourth string now. He could revert to Victor. Yes, I think we're going to see the Victor here. Um, curious that they would save the counter pick for him. I mean, mid lane is a very important lane, possibly the most important in terms of map control, especially in this tournament. However, most of the strongest mids are blind pickable mids. And um, they don't counter pick for Swift forever. They never did it locally. Well, they did the until TF the finals. Yesterday. So again, like when I'm saying locally, oh. I mean like they yes. always pick their mid laner and they would save the solo lane to be the counter pick because they yep. put most of their efforts towards getting Radar and Egym to be fair. Yep. Instead, I'll have to see what Chiefs want to take away here. Victor is an obvious choice. We felt very comfy on the champion. But I wonder what they've got prepared here because again, this draft has sort of fallen in a very predictable way. And he is going to go to Ooh. Cassidy and that is a volatile pick. Red side Cassidy. Uh for those who don't know, uh, Chiefs are known for losing to Red Side Cassidy <laughs> an awful lot. So maybe they decided it's their turn to have a crack. Uh, look, Cass is good into Liss. Um, eventually, Liss won't be able to stand in the lane with him. Uh, Chiefs are looking for that level 16 Cassidy now. Again, with the Caitlyn, Caitlyn also scales very well. So they have a very strong scaling comp. Um, but Dead FM, so much CC, so much early pressure. Uh, I'm not sure whether or not, I'm not sure whether Chiefs will be able to make it that long. Yeah, I'm looking at the mid game honestly because yeah. they want that level 16 on two different champions. Caitlyn has the mid game trough. Cassidy starts to ramp up, but is still exploitable in the mid game. I think they could actually get run down by way a very stock standard Alistar Nautilus type of competition. Yeah. Dead, yeah. Dead competition. FM spike just as the Chiefs have a trough, mm -hmm. and also Dead FM have extremely good engage. So 
look, I think the Chiefs can do it, um, but they're definitely going to have to weather the storm here. And I think the other thing is they're engaged tools. We talk about this all the time, especially in this tournament. Getting in is very important because you need to capitalize on mistakes in best of ones. And people have really shifted away from day one where it was just like, let's play all the really strong like meta comps with like Kindred, Siva, Rise. Yeah. Because it's like, that doesn't win you games here in this tournament. So I think Chiefs, you look at their engage, Maokai flank, Ejim hook. That's kind of it. Not much. Like, Cassidy can get aggressive later. He does have teleport as well, which will help his lane and help him in the late game for maybe even being a split pusher. So Chiefs have options, but it's always scary because Dead FM have, I'm going to say like the wild card comp. It's just heavy engage, mm -hmm. really straightforward, strong mid game because we've seen it so much this tournament. And the Chiefs, they haven't gone full Civil Rise Kindred, but it's more on the end of the spectrum than like the Alistar, Lissandra style that they were playing, even the Twist of Fate they were playing to get themselves their recent wins. Yeah, we... Um I said the other day that one of the big things is that either Swiffer or Ejim needs to have the engage tool in the in this team for them to work properly um, as players, not necessarily as champions, but um, they don't. Well, they certainly don't. Thank you once again, Carbon, though, for joining us for the Pro game. See if we see you post game, though. But for now, we are going to get ourselves onto the rift as ZFM and Chiefs are going to do battle here. The Chiefs pretty much battling for their tournament life at this point, Rusty. And then, um, we'll move out as five here and maybe look to get some level one invade pressure down. Ward goes down. First blood has been struck. Second blood. It's not. Oh, we got it. We did it, Reddit. We managed to take it. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, we do have a pause, guys. So, quick delay, but I think Rusty can confirm two kills there onto two different trinket wards. Two wards, too easy. Is that how we <laughs> define that one? No, this definitely still, whilst we are looking at that level one invade, do or die for the Chiefs right now. They do have to win this game to have any chance at making playoffs. And... You know what, for what it's worth, two wards starting on the right foot in yep. terms of vision placement at level one. Bit of extra CS. It is nice to see them get aggressive at level one as well, which I really enjoy. I think we've seen a lot of teams just sort of really get lazy, honestly, with their level one vision. We've seen a lot of like spreads out the river, lots of neutral vision, and then blind lane swaps early on in the tournament. This is kind of much more sensible to me. Get your invades down, maybe look for a swap if that's what you want, Caitlin. Reasonable in a 2v2, probably maybe a little safer in a lane swap the Chiefs. They should feel comfortable playing this sort of style. Yeah, they absolutely should be. It's something we haven't seen a lot of, honestly, from any team in this region, as you mentioned, or in the wildcard tournament, I should say. But the Chiefs, they know what they're doing when it comes to these invades. I'm honestly shocked that we've seen maybe two or three total throughout the entirety of this tournament. It's nice to see the progression, though, where they are walking is super manly because it wasn't the long way around. It wasn't the safe way. They've just went straight through where the Raptors are. Yeah, and they managed to get two wards as a result. So kind of a creative thing there from the Chiefs. We'll see if they can get uh, any kills potentially or if they are getting deep vision or maybe just early information. Once again, level one, it's nice to see teams in general get more proactive. The Chiefs have really adjusted to their early jungle pressure. And I think that does help Spooks out a lot as well. He is on the Kindred. He needs as much info as he can get in the early stages of the game. Spooks, he's always a, a jungler that plays well with information. We'll see if he can continue that here. Because once again, Spooks is required to set the tempo early on for the Chiefs and yeah. try and get them towards that mid and late game. Because this comp, it takes time to really go. And that's the cool thing. So we mentioned it during the drafting phase with Carbon as well, that they've got the mid-game trough that they need to get through. And that's where Detonation, Focus, Me are actually strong. But as far as I'm concerned, that's on Spooks in the early game to actually get things going. Because if you're ahead, the trough is less of a trough and their spike is less of a spike. It brings the relative strength between the teams closer to square one. So Spooks, very important in this early game, as is winning lanes. But the Cassidy makes that very difficult. Having the tank top lane makes that difficult. So what I mean by that is primarily Raider and Ejim if they want standard lanes, need to actually man up and get that done. Well, we'll see if they can. But just to let you know, we do have a slight audio issue on the, at the venue there. So players are sorting it out. Looks like we should be back in the game relatively soon. But we'll stay with us now for a little bit more chit-chat before we get ourselves into the game once again. I do like what Chiefs are trying to do here, but... Have to be worried about the big mid-game power there from Detonation. Focus me. Spooks, though, we mentioned, very important role here. Kindred is a great aggressive champion and can even snowball if he wants to step up into a carry role, which he was doing a little bit of yesterday when he had an excellent game. My question to you, though, Rusty, is where is he going to go? Because you mentioned already some of these lanes are kind of a little meh. To be perfectly honest, which lane can he maybe look to snowballs? We are going to pop ourselves so back in the game. The, way, the rule of thumb, and it's something that Spooks actually did yesterday and I was a big fan of, is get one kill for the Maokai. Get Swiper in a more comfortable position in the tank battle. It's a slow battle, but if a tank's winning, only one of them can teleport, right? Like, it makes a lot of sense that you try and actually get them going and exploit what isn't actually a tank early in the game because he doesn't have items. 
and from there you move towards the Caitlyn Thresh lane because honestly, like if a Caitlyn falls behind and hits mid game, it's not just a trough. Like you are done. Yeah, that's the big issue. Certainly are, and you can see lanes are going to now break out here. By the looks of things, we actually do have a bit of a swapsies happening. Radio in the top side of the map is there with Egypt, and we'll have actually a lane swap completed here instead of those standard lanes this time around. Egypt and Radio though are going to go check this side of the jungle, but Detonation Focus may actually get their wolves. Good start there from Catch. As Eternal, he's going to take one of those little ones down. Might get both there. The pole fries in. Thunderlords is good. And that's actually great damage there. They might even commit for a potential kill. But No Ignite makes it a bit tricky. Swiper and Spook get low, but they will survive. The and level one Red Pot, thankfully, I will say, gets them out to safety. And by Red Pot, I mean refillable potion. But good enough. Naturally, the double jungle has been thwarted to an extent or slowed down from the side of the Chiefs. That actually really hurts a Kindred. Because look at the difference between Catch and Spooks already. Once they move on to the next part of their camps. I don't know if Catch will man up and go towards the blue buff though. Since that has already been taken down. Well, Spooks and Swiper on that red, so don't lose too much time there. But good play regardless from the detonation focus me. Duo Utapon now going to come into that bottom lane. Going to start that 3v0 push. But this is still the thing to me, right? He has to go bottom now, Catch. And whilst he had an advantage in the jungle, he actually doesn't have one anymore. Because he needs to go push with the team. Graves pushing turrets will be quick. But it will be... At least, I guess, a less inefficient jungle clear. Yep, again, might even lose that buff because you can see Spooks is going to move over to that blue. He's now on the other side getting that grunt. He'll take what he can because he does want to keep jungling here. But Kindred and Graves both jungle pretty quickly. Spooks will just have access to a few more monsters early on. But you can see both teams are starting this slow push. And I think, oh, sorry, fast push. Definitely not a slow push. RNG, however, did favor detonation focus me as the mark was on the bottom side of the map. Just one of those things that naturally just happens, you know, you have to let it be. And to me, the only trade-off that was effectively made by that really deep invade to push Spooks out of the jungle is whilst Catch gets those camps, Radio was getting a lot of farm that Xerost was missing because of the pressure they applied. So slight advantages, slight differences achieved. But it makes sense for these teams because Xerost is not the primary carry of Dead Nation Focus. And we are just going to get that early gold down from his turrets. Utapon, lovely bounce there. Swiper with a pretty similar looking one. Does uh, Both top laners do collect all that local gold, so they'll have a bit extra to work with. Cat denies that mark away, though. We'll take that off the right-hand side of the jungle as he gets the scuttle crab. And Spooks, of course, has to take the left-hand side one. Now looking mid for a bit of a cheeky peek in, but Saras level 4, feeling pretty comfy. Looks like both mid laners are farming up nicely, so isolated mid lane didn't hurt the Cassidy too much, but... He's uh, probably just fine until Lissandra 1v1. And that's the big deal. It's not hurting the Cassidy. If anything is hurting the Cassidy, then we're running into a lot of issues on this Chiefs roster, whereas Dead Nation Focus may be feeling good. Eternal's out of position a bit. Ooh, hook in there from Egypt, but doesn't land it. Good flash from Alistar to get out of the way. This is different. But good aggression there from the Chiefs. And yes, we're actually going to rematch into standard lanes. So this is the uncommon... Uh, Transition, I guess, from a standard lane swap. Usually two turrets get taken in the outer side, but we are actually going to reset these lanes. And the Chiefs, they have actually a perfectly good tower to chill out at. Yeah, and rule of thumb, it's a Caitlyn into a Lucian, right? So you want to have the range advantage. Alistar doesn't have anything besides all-in engages, and that's also the flash now burnt. So early rotation from Spook's actually paying off. Swiffer needs to be a little bit careful. Ooh, he's out of mana, but Seros with no aggressive summoner. Swiffer so uh, playing with fire a bit there, but knows he was probably safe. Is going to have to burn the TP though. But I imagine Lissandra's going to push out a wave and then answer back. See what Swiffer does have is that that hook lands onto a minion. Radio level 3 taking a big chunk of damage. Has to be careful versus Solution despite the farm lead. Both AD carries do have a cull for a bit of extra health. But 2v2, I don't think the Chiefs expect to get too aggressive here. No, they shouldn't be getting overly aggressive. They actually just want to exploit that range and poke and whittle their opponents down. Also, by keeping that wave frozen, they ran the risk of being out-traded. So naturally, it was an expected thing. The other big thing was Spooks actually poked his head out and was like, I am here, and scared detonation focus me's bottom lane. You can see now, focusing much more on having their vision there, but they can't get to the tri-bush. So they're zoning themselves, but Spooks isn't even there. No, he's not. And Radius doing a nice job kind of holding the wave back. It's not frozen, but it'll deny what CS he can. You can see he's already got a pretty significant CS lead versus Xeroth there with the Caitlyn. He did have uh, both mid laners go back and TP back to lane as well. They actually have catalysts everywhere. So Rod of Ages Lissandra will once again make an appearance. But uh, Rod of Ages cast in a bit more standard as Spooks. He's going to pop his way down here. Has a pink one just to his right. Should be able to find that as he moves into the brush. And Swift in our level 6 can't afford to get a bit more aggressive. Yeah, absolutely can afford to be. And whilst it's 
a peculiar thing that he's going Road of Ages on that Lissandra. At the same time, you have to think that he's matching the scaling in terms of damage that he deals to carries that Swiffer is also getting. Mobility is the only problem, especially around that level 11 mark. Very good ward from Swiffer, though. Catch is going to take it out with the Raptor Sense proccing, but that could have been disaster <laughs> for Swiffer. Yeah. Graves managed to get into the lane. Saras is level 6 with no TP, but can, of course, make his way either in the lane or around the map and try and get some pressure down. Radio, though, forced to push this wave back out. But also forces junglers here. That's the thing, right? So this being super pushed, Detonation Focus in his bottom lane is showing too much respect because they don't know where Spooks is. But they do now. Yeah, they certainly do. Spooks actually going to move in. That one over to a uh, catch, actually, but damage onto Eternal. Good little hook there from Ejim, but can't quite commit for an all-in. You can see Ejim with that Ignite is definitely, as always, thirsty for some blood. Yeah, naturally. But he hits his hook. That's the most important thing. He's a kind of a... Warm-up based player. Yep. You know, if he hits one or he hits two in a row, then you feel like he's going to hit the next six. Starts to freak you out, honestly. Hmm, interesting roam here from the Chiefs, actually. They'll use Caitlyn and her siege potential to try and pressure down Lissandra. They know they forced them back for a little bit. The wave's coming in, so it's not the worst time ever for this play. Likely, sorry, unlikely to get the turret, but at least some pressure is nice. There's four members of the Chiefs trying to make something happen here. Saros does not follow the claw in. The hook doesn't land either. And that's probably all she wrote on that one. Yeah, it's just a bit of damage, but they're also sharing farm between each respective carry on the Chiefs roster. So both Raider and Swift are now in that middle lane. So naturally, oh. one of them has to get out. <laughs> Swift didn't quite make it over the wall, so Swift just comes in and tanks the blue buff up. Beautiful one's here, though. Hold. This is actually a little tricky. We'll pull it back in. There's a pink ward there. Well played there by the Chiefs. The Swift takes big damage there from the ulti out of catch. He was looking to steal that blue buff. We'll track the potion charges, though. Should be a little safe there in that mid lane. Azeros pushing this back out. Pretty low on health, but no one here to contest him right now. Yeah, I think he was actually holding the wave for a while, which is why he's missing all of that health, because nobody was there to contest him naturally. But he has closed that gap as well to Raider, who's been running around the map wildly, not actually finding lanes to farm a whole lot, just chipping away at detonation focus. They're actually now swapping back. Radiant is going to move into a brief 1v1 here. With Udipon, who is level 6 on the Nautilus. Pressure could be here. Raid is a pretty easy kill if someone else is there from Detonation Focus Me. But Ejim and Spooks actually like what they're doing here. They're sticking together a lot, mm -hmm. trying to roam around and create pressure, make sure the scaling carries can continue to get their farm safely. And if they find a pick, great. They'll probably get a kill. And this is actually quite standard Spooks, and that's what I really like about this right now, is he's just getting vision. It's very passive vision. They're not contesting the red buff every single time. Doesn't really want to fight that Graves, but he at least knows where he is at every single time. The problem with this is that he will start to fall behind as Kindred because Graves is hard farming. Yep, and that's Graves. Pretty much the longer you can stay in the jungle, the happier you are as he's now 40 to 33. Spooks will go ahead and get this red buff, so we'll play catch up here. And uh, both junglers are level 6. Catch having a bit of an experience lead there just due to the speed of Graves' is clear. But we've actually reset into full standard lanes. But we do have some turrets up. So a long lane there for the Chiefs to maybe worry about. Do not want to get flanked by Lissandra. But here's Spooks into the long lane of Detonation Focus Me. Looking for Udipon, but he's going to walk past a ward here. And Udipon is going to try and run away, but with no vision, Chiefs can't really force a potential 2v2. Catch would be quite strong. Yeah, and they also don't even have vision in that river at all. I think Detonation Focus Me are aware it wasn't placed down because the ward was there to watch Spooks' actions. And Catch actually finds himself with an opportunity, potentially. Never mind. Swiper does check down. Knows that that's got a crab is gone. Swiffer getting aggressive again. Force Postles down for a bit of poke onto Seros. Once again, trying to play up in this lane. Is down about 10 CS. Catch is now in that mid lane as well. Swiffer going to have to be awfully careful. One aggressive riff walk could cost him a summoner here. But they know Catch is there. Actually just cleared a ward. That pink, making sure the vision stays true for them. That's back in the bottom lane. BF Swords doing battle here. Radier still keeping up nicely on CS, but again, the Chiefs are sort of farming through what's going to be mid-game coming up in the next few minutes. Yeah, that's the big danger once again. Catch nearly at his jungle item completed. And once we start to get these big items done for Detonation Focus Me, and by big items, I simply mean the first items, you'll start to see the map open a little bit more potentially in their favor. And that's the storm that Chiefs have to weather. Because if they start losing kills in that mid-game, the whole map could explode. Right of Age is done for both mid laners, though. I thought Saros was maybe looking for a TP play. Instead, Spook's just going to do some counter-jungling and catch. Maybe going to eat a hook here. Ejim, though, I'm quite calibrated this morning. 
He's going to miss that one onto the jungler, which could have been the potential first blood. But again, the Chief's getting uh, pretty mobile around this map. Actually, yeah. maybe going to put Radium mid for some pressure here. Kassadin right now with the TP up is actually checking out the side lane. Yeah, and he's got his Rod of Ages, so he's scaled to a point where he's going to continue to scale organically through time placed on the map. And doesn't mean he needs to be mid lane against Lissandra, who whilst they say, like, you know, he starts to do better against Lissandra in the 1v1, can't necessarily lane. Having your AD carry and support in the middle lane is just the safer grounds for them to move around the map. Swift also having teleport, and he can 1v1 Xeros. Spooks is here as well, so maybe looking for a dive. Spooks does Q over, but he's not going to go straight in for a catch. Though caught in the jungle once again, does get out with the flash, but it just keeps happening. Headshot onto Eternal. Good block from Ali. Yeah, very good block from the Alistar, but once again, catch caught on rotation. It, it, absolutely, it feels like deja vu from a lot of the recent catch games that we have seen. Xeros actually in a lot of trouble if these minions do crash. This dive's coming. Spook's going to line it up. He'll start things there. He's got the ulti TP down, though. That should cut things off. But the hook lands in mid lane now into Xeros's radio. Going to get the damage in. Culling lands in from Xeros. But that TP got cancelled. It was Swiffer that made sure he got in there. That's why he was taking damage. Sorry. Looks like Ejim got in there. And now uh, Eternal down the delicate. bottom side. Yeah, Spooks has to ulti, but Xeros may be in trouble. Exhaust is down again. They need the heal out from the ulti. They will get it there from Lamb's Respite. Ejim also coming down. A whole lot of cooldowns burnt, but nobody dies. Nobody dying. Absolutely right. It was close from both parties. Eternal actually making his way down. The saving grace of Xeros and that teleport from Xeros, I'm guessing, was the yep. one that was cancelled. Was the Ejim hook that cancelled that I one? assume so. Because he's he taking only, a lot of damage. He's the only one that can cancel it. Yeah, that's why I got confused. I'm like, why Swift below? Oh, he's diving. Yeah, yeah. Because then he's not mid lane anymore. <laughs> Can't cancel TP, though. Cassidy and Funfax. Very aggressive from the Chiefs once again. They're playing the numbers game around the map, basically. Where if we have two and you have one, we can fight you. Uh, I'm not sure about this, though. Radiant is actually going to eat the pole. Good play from Ejim, though. But he's going to have to maybe get himself to safety. Spooks around the other side. Catch. Trying to take him out, but the hook lands in. Spooks going to go over. Swiffer in there as well. The damage to catch has no sums left. First blood. He's going to go to Radiant. Yeah, they pick up that Primera Sangre pastry time. They get themselves the first blood. Chiefs now moving towards the Dragon as well. The immediate objective rotation. They need to show some respect to the Alistar Lissandra, however. Because if that combo connects... Here, Seros goes in. Eternal, That's huge knock-up. And now Seros is going to go in. Four-man ring of Frost. Swiffer, though, still fighting away as Eternal. is going to take him down. The Lantern does get Swiper out. But the Chiefs, lucky to get out with only one death. They are very lucky that they get out. If Seros had his ultimate, that was ridiculously well done from Detonation, focus me. Only the one kill on the Dragon though. The big turnaround, still there. They just didn't respect. No, a little greedy from the Chiefs after a very good play to pretty much bait catch into dying there. Getting aggressive into their own jungle and picking up first blood. Is that Caitlyn item build, by the way? Rapid fire cannon first after BF Sword. We see them, boys. Yeah, that's kind of like one defined strategy. You see a lot of Runan's Hurricane after a BF Sword. Gives you a lot of damage, you get more headshots, things like that. Mm -hmm. Like There's a lot of bonuses to having that item. But the Rapid Fire Cannon to have increased range and the guaranteed bonus damage works on turrets. That's a uh, very much a strategy. That's the only strategy that he currently has. Yep. I and mean, that we'll makes him weaker mid-game if they fall behind. Well, going to have to try and siege down mid turret because that's pretty much what they're using it for, I think. If Terrell's available, though, that'll make the siege even stronger if they can get it. Detonation focus me. Do take down the Scuttle Crab. We don't really have vision control of that objective right now. Radiant going to move back into this mid lane. And looks like Eternal and Xeros are actually sticking there in that 2v2 now as well. We'll see if this costs Xeros any farm. So doesn't have his TP up right now. But I'm sure he's going to be okay. No, well, Swift is actually holding a freeze from the looks of it in that bottom lane. He's not hard pushing anyway. And so there's nowhere really for Xeros to go that isn't mid with the rest of the team. That means that Ejim and Radiant have to actually be a little bit more careful. Not that Alistar has any means to outright flash engage. Swiffer so does actually push the wave back in, so it was holding it for a while, but now builds one up. Might try and take out this turret in the bottom side. It's pretty strong. Cooldown boots plus the Rod of Ages means if uh, the right target comes down, it can probably pick a fight. Not sure Seros is the one, but it's level 11, so I think he'll take the fight anyway. That's true. I'm not sure we could stop him. Seros, though, nice little Thunderlord's proc. Good Q, actually, as well. And catch being down here definitely is an issue. So, uh, Swiffer not going to fancy a fight here. I think that Swiffer doesn't know, and he may still be stuck in a situation, though. Rift walks away now. He definitely nah, knows. level 11. Yeah, Spooks comes down, but wasn't quite in the area. Catch, though, not able to make it. 
And they'll continue doing battle for a little while longer. Pings, though, from the Chiefs out onto the jungler of Detonation. Focus Me Spooks starting to cover that bottom lane there for Swiffer, who's gotten a lot of farm hanging out in the side lane. He absolutely has. One thing to note, of course, is that all of the Chiefs are still getting their way towards being massive. We're still getting closer to the mid game above late game, however, where Detonation Focus Me have got the team composition and the items to actually back them up. Yeah, I think Chiefs are doing the best thing they can in the early stages to get their farm onto their mid to late game carries, but we talked about it in the draft. Detonation Focus Me, probably around the 20 minute mark is when they'll look to really get their comp going. Chiefs just pretty much have to stall for maybe 10 minutes, we'll say. Yeah, roughly 10 minutes. You're aiming at, like, say, the 30-minute mark, depending on the gold that they progressively get. Maybe it's through objectives. They take down turrets, perhaps. Maybe they get a couple of picks. Could accelerate that time a little bit further, but aim for around 30 minutes, yeah. I feel like it's more important, though, to uh, stay even rather than get ahead. Yes. If you can get ahead safely, sure, do that. This is a very controlled game thus far from the Chiefs. That's the added bonus if they find a lead. This is the other big thing, though, is they should keep Swiffer in a solo lane at all times. They should not put him with other people. If he can stay bottom or he can go top, it doesn't matter which lane, as long as he's by himself, because he needs solo experience so they can get that 16 mark and just be ridiculous. And he's starting to scale level 12 right now. He's got the blasting one now in the inventory. Saros answering, so likely Negatron's going to be dueling here. There's an old magic mantle also there for Swiffer. So, he, uh, in fact, identical item builds right now for those mid laners, but... Kasten will scale a bit differently to Lissandra. As we do see Essence Reaver now up for Xeros and Radio actually for the pickaxe. Looks like Infinity Edge second. Yeah, that's going to be the Infinity Edge build. Makes a lot of sense with the rapid fire cannon that he currently has. Of course, there's a big gold bridge between the items he has right now and the Infinity Edge actually being completed. And even if he upgrades his boots, then he could be running into a trough. Oh, good damage from Swiffer. Starting to really bully around here. Spooks is here, but they don't fancy a 2v2. It is Utapon coming in. But Seros, no flash. Swiffer just going to riff walk away. Hook's there. Eternal's also down here. They're not in range. And the Chiefs actually collapse to that side of the map. Maybe looking for a pick in the jungle. Catch! He's going to eat a hook there. Spooks is now going to start something. But the damage is massive. Crit's not quite enough. And Catch once again gets away. Is here Seros moving in there. The exhaust line onto Spooks. But Swiper's down. Lambshire Spite's going to try and shake this off. And Seros is going to get aggressed on the Chiefs. Are going to get one. A Swiper picks the kill up onto Lissandra. And now Utapon getting chased. He'll flash out of the way. Eternal trying to kite back there and use the pulverize. But Swiper, he wants back in. And Swiffer is going to get a turn. But blown up there on the tree. As Seros a little too far forward. Utapon. Trying to fight where he can, but Radia cutting very well. The Chiefs get themselves an ace. Yeah, 19 minutes. All five members of Detonation focused me taken off the board. And look at the blinking health bars of the carries of Chiefs. Still the only members standing. And that's because throughout that fight, they were kiting in and out, back and forth impeccably, and only taking damage where they were hitting carries at the same time. Swiffer used a flash force pulse just to get onto Zerost and catch to try and take them down. There was no answer available from Detonation Focus Me, and that's because Catch got caught. Yep. Again. It keeps happening. Egypt's got the perfect champion to try and get him as well with the Thrash. Catch, I, again, I can't believe he lived to start that fight off. Radius crit almost wiped him straight off some of his rifts. I just can't believe he keeps getting caught. <laughs> Honestly, and the sad part about it is... Eternal was almost ready for him to get caught at the blue button. Mm -hmm. Like, he was waiting for the hook to catch him because he tried to flash pulverize, but he missed everybody. And that was where the fight actually broke out. Well, the Chiefs get themselves about 2,000 gold in the lead, so nothing massive, but always nice to win a team fight. That'll accelerate some of their builds. You can see Swiffer with an Abyssal now, and Raider does finish that IE. Swiffer, they're going to get aggressed on here in top side. Fancies a fight. Oh, gets stunned up by the passive. And now he knows Catch is here. He's going to have to kite around. Needs to be careful. Kites back towards the tower. Hook's going to miss, though. And Swiffer might have just done it, but the damage could be too much here. Once again, stunned up. And Catch smacks him with the ulti for a kill. Yeah, Swiffer actually overstaying his welcome in the way of doing damage instead of just trying to run. The second the hook missed, he probably could have tried to just run away, but he pays for it. They lose the turret. They lose a kill. We get the dragon, though. So Tavara stacks for Spooks is nice, but the Chiefs... Probably want to try and take an objective here. Unfortunately, Radia, despite the strength, can't really do too much. And Catch will likely get this turret with Utapon's help if no one's here to answer. Meaning wave not that big, but look at the damage they're doing. Here comes a second wave. That should be it. Yeah, that's most likely going to be the oh, turret. Oh, they don't stay. They respect Ejim, who has a massive flank. Remember, a lot of ultimates not available from those two members, which is why they're respecting Ejim. Uh, I do have teleport from Swiffer as well, but Seraph could answer. 
Swift is actually going to go back towards the top side, so Detonation Focus Me will live. Not punished for their potential overstay there in the top side. Yeah, he's happy with the Nautilus matchup, not because he can kill the Nautilus, but because it's just farming. Once again, the level 12 Swiffer, four away from his power point, one of the few champions that scales phenomenally well with levels as much as items. This is the dangerous part of the game for Chiefs, though. I thought they almost picked a risky fight in the jungle. Did manage to win and get an ace, but if that had gone wrong, they'd have a very different looking game right now. And Detonation Focus Me, still plenty of strength right now, 22 minutes into this one. I honestly just think the DFM blundered the execution. Mm. That was a fight that could have gone horribly wrong for the Chiefs, and they started the right way, and because of a mistake from DFM, they continue the fight. Not that Detonation Focus Me are slowing down at any rate right now that Graves is still a threat certainly is catch again probably the best champion for him to play if he is going to get caught in the jungle because Graves is pretty tanky just is that a whole host of damage he's got the more of my Morty is finished up as well as Seros does actually go to answer the Cassidy Swift are going to have to have a somewhat more challenging opponent to battle but maybe a bit more pressure they can exert as you can see moves forward throws the Q out but catch is here once again you know Swift are going to take the cannon and run I think snared up Seros not going to commit the ulti now he's going to it. Catches here again. Swift are going to get ultied up. Can't get out of this one. And now he's going to Rift Walk away. But he's got no help here at all. Catch. He's going to use that smoke screen. But Swift is going to flash out. Rift Walk once again as Swiffer is trying to find a wall to get himself over. Slow is good. He gets over to the Grump. But Seros going to follow. Q is not going to land there. But he flashes forward. And Catch nails another ulti. Yeah, and they get themselves another pick onto Swiffer, who is more than overstaying his welcome. He has no right being that far forward and playing that aggressively. It's just very confusing. Oh, they're not going to kill Utapon. Swiper goes in, though. That's deep. Way too deep. Well, he's not going to take too much damage, but not like Utapon is either. Like, DFM are actually actively pushing this middle lane. They've got Dive Oh, threat. Eternal. That was good. But Raider does get out there with the net. Now Hook lands in. He'll cleanse it off with the ulti. And Raider actually standing a little too far forward. He's out of mana, but he wow. just goes in. Three-man play. He really wants it. Catch. He's going to get low, and Spooks is now here as well. But Utapon rejoins back in. As that is going to be a kill. Spooks, though, locked up. He's going to try and kill Xeros, but he gets CC'd forever as the double Swiper's goes over. In. Swiper moves in and does get the trade, but Raider's just tied up completely as Swiffer is going to try moving with the ulti. Good flash from Raider. He's going to get him out from under Utapon. And now Swiffer needs to get a few kills, but the tower's there. Swiper taking up what he can. There's a kill onto Eternal. But now the Chiefs have to run. It is real scrappy right now. And catch over staying is welcome. If Udipon hit that hook, he runs the risk. Swift are going to be a little bit cheeky, I think. Oh, not cheeky enough. But once again, that was DFM actually finding the mid-game fight. They actually make a good rotation. Swiffer out of position dies. And with Swiffer dead, there's not a lot Raider can do against the tanks that are currently present on Detonation Focus Me in Udipon and to an extent Eternal. And even though, once again, the execution was missed by Eternal, and every single time it's not picture-perfect, they still make it work effectively because their composition is stronger now, and Chiefs keep fighting them. Yep, and that's the thing. I mean, look at the gold right now. It's even still. Chiefs actually technically have a very small gold lead. But Detonation Focus Me, they're up in turrets. They're even in dragons. They're just down a kill. The Chiefs, if you think if they play the map a little bit more aggressively, They'd actually be able to float this lead in and get to late game safely. Instead, they're picking fights or so Detonation Focus Me are forcing them. So Chiefs, they've got plenty of potential here in this game, but if they keep playing like this, they will actually fall behind. Can't afford to make these key mistakes when Detonation Focus Me's comp is very powerful. Yeah, they, like, they can't afford to make them, but we're at 25 minutes where the gold is even. And for a composition that is probably going to outscale Detonation Focus Me, not taking into account execution, then absolutely the Chiefs are still in a good position to carry out the rest of this game. It's just an inevitable fate that in two levels from now, Swift is going to be strong. Raider just needs items to be strong because he's at a two-item trough where he needs to hit that three- and four-item stage where he's overbearingly powerful. Swiper is going to be impossible to kill. Like They've still got all of these things to look forward to. It's just that they keep matching DFM where they're not as strong. Kill onto Seros, perhaps. Spooks going to look for it. Damage is good. Spooks is going to follow under, but doesn't want to commit under the tower with... He did have his ulti. Yeah, I don't think he had his W up to that would continue make sense. jumping because he just did the jungle camp, might if get I a, had to guess. Might get a tower out of it, though. They gank the teleport. Saros is going to have to recall, and Chiefs are actually going to get some gold again. I said the gold was even, but the towers were not. Chiefs, every tower they get at this point is wonderful gold to push themselves towards that 30-minute mark. Even Raider still hanging out for a siege here in mid. Yeah, the standing gold that is available will put them a fair chunk ahead if they're able to successfully get them and not trade. 
And there's not a lot to trade with if you were detonation. Focus me, the Japanese side. They've already pushed the outer turrets. They're not set up to take any of the inners just yet. At all. Well, they're set up to fight, certainly. So the Chiefs have to be careful not to extend too far in these lanes. Dragging up in 10 seconds. Could be dangerous bait for the Chiefs to maybe take here. Catch once again playing up, but should be okay this time around. He's going to get the pink ward, though. No, he's actually not going to commit. What did Carbon He say left yesterday? the jungle. Carbon said something yesterday along the lines of, if I find a pink ward as Graves, I'd rather, rather just let them have the yep. vision. <laughs> <laughs> Too much time to kill. And Ejim was threatening with a hook. Swiffle, this is cute. Waves hello to Seros. Gets out of the way. The rest of the team's there. <laughs> Waves hello to all of them. <laughs> I could have flanked you right now, Swiffer says. You could still flank them if Chiefs actually want to fight here, but... They want the tower instead. The force detonation focuses me back to mid lane. And now Swiffer goes back bottom. He does not, not have his yet. teleport, but it's close. But they're fighting over the dragon anyway. So as long as Swiffer doesn't get caught out laning bottom, which he needs to back off right now, the second he loses vision of them, on the assumption that they are coming to him, not doing the dragon. The Chiefs are going to try and make a trade here, but what is it for? Top lane turret. Yep, that's what they're going in. Chiefs will rotate themselves top lane. Don't know if you focus me. Do get Dragon number two. Swiffer so starts to push in bottom lane, so there's additional pressure if this plays out for the next minute or so. So depending on what DFM do right now, they should match the Chiefs, but if they go mid lane, then it would just be a base race. So they actually have to answer that. They may not lose the turret, however, but it's a lot of damage down onto the objective. Ooh. Everyone else leaves. Look at the caster creeps doing the work. Eternal, though, should be able to scoop these away with the Pulverize. And the Chiefs, they're going to play conservatively here, which I think is the right move. They know right now that this game, at the point it's currently at, is very tense. Yeah. They just need to wait it out and get those items. And look at Radio. Next item coming up. That almost looks like a Hurricane. It could well be the Hurricane. We're yet to see, and I would imagine it is, honestly. Then it'll help out it's with probably his. not Stack Shiv. No. Could be Phantom Dancer. Could be Phantom Dancer, uh, though, yes. I'm still assuming it's the Hurricane. All right, so we'll leave it at that. All we'll, right. we'll touch back in with it in a minute. Maybe five minutes. But Raid is still not going towards armor penetration. Still going damage. Does want to attack faster on these turrets and hit carries, I suppose. Oh. He is not getting through Utapon anytime. No, soon. he'll need a last whisper at some point. That's probably what we're looking to. To say Raider is officially arrived in the game as Caitlyn. Yeah. Towards that late game position. Lichbane up for Swiffer as well, actually. So he's at three items and level 15. Getting awfully close. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually kind of has a kind of a split push build, I guess. Can definitely pressure side lanes. Well, the Lichbane's always a side like, lane push build oh. to any extent, right? There's a lot of damage. I think the other big thing to note, though, is that whilst Lissandra and Nautilus are dealing with these side lanes, Ejim's actually got a plan in place to combat one of those lanes. And you can put Swiffer with the empowered cannon minion with that banner of command. It's pretty hard for Seros to do anything. Mm -hmm. And that's great news for Swiffer, who again will just play it safe here, push the lane in and back off. He's more than anything wasting Seros' time and swipe up. Oh, he's got the flank. Get him, Utapon. Well, watch how this one plays out. Get him. Spoiler alert, nobody wins. This is the opposite of a Game of Thrones <laughs> movie. <laughs> yes. Nobody dies <laughs> instead of everyone. When you play the game of top lane, just nobody wins. You win or you... I don't even know. You win or you live? It's not an iron throne either. It's like a cushion throne <laughs> yeah. or something. It's a pillow fort. Yeah, pillow fort. Battling in the pillow fort. The seven kingdoms. <laughs> Eight kingdoms in the IWCI. <laughs> Grump taken there by catch. And swipe up. We'll just continue buying some time here. Does have the Phantom Dancer actually. Oh, here we go. There's some damage. He's seen him though. That's the twist of events vision. in. But yeah, vision's down. And now Swiper actually taking some pain here. Utapon going to tie him up. This is unlikely to be anything. Although, actually, teleports are going to come in. But Saras will answer here. It's a 2v3 for the Chiefs. Swiper has to cancel. But Swiper does flash out to safety. Yeah, no, Swiper with a very good flash to get himself out. There wasn't a whole host of damage coming down onto him. But he actually ran out of mana and couldn't afford to spam his spells and keep getting his health back with the passive. And so has to get himself out to safety. Spooks, Spooks hooked up though, caught. does put the lands for a spike, but Eternal gonna get caught up by the hook. Spooks really can't get out of this, does flash over, needs to queue over the wolf, he has it, but Xeroth 
able to take him out with the help from Catchy's ulti. But now Swiper's back in the mix there. Zeros, Zeros sorry, does ult himself as Zeros is going crazy in the back line. Radiant needs to live through these fights, but he's getting exhausted. Egypt is going to be okay, but Swiffer goes in too deep. Catch is going to take him out, and now Swiper's still trying to tank things up. He's going to take the Lantern out to safety, but Detonation, focus me, get two free kills. Yeah, good Lantern is the only saving grace for the Chiefs right there. They get completely out team fought by a standard team fighting composition, and that is because Spooks decided that he wanted to jump the Raptor Wall into a Nautilus hook. That is not a position you want to find yourself in. And DFM, they match them in the middle of the rift and they take them out. We've hit it. We've hit the 31 minute mark. 31 and a half through actually, but the Chiefs are not quite there yet on their team fight potential. And you're never winning a team fight that's a 5v4 anyway. No, and Cassidy got there late. They didn't have their hurricane completed. It was only just done now. They didn't have every single tool available to them. And they started the fight on the wrong foot even in that 4v5. No Zonia's on the Cassidy is the only big thing missing. And I question whether he's going to go to that opposed to avoid stuff. No, he will be. Well, Radio takes the mid lane turret. So, yep, Swift is going to go that Zonia's. The gold is still even yep. for what it's worth. So, uh, yeah, Radiant managed evening that out. Yeah, this game's hard sometimes. It Taking is. out that mid lane turret. So if we're close to 16 as well, so little things do matter here in these team fights. The Chiefs have a bit more scaling to do. And again, Dead Notion focus me. Standard team fighting comp with plenty of power. They, you know, technically lose late game comp versus comp, but that doesn't mean that they can't put up a fight. Yeah. Especially and if mistakes and are so made. So we said they lose late game with team compositions, but that's strictly not including execution mm -hmm. on fights, right? If they catch someone out of position, if the fights are started 4v5, if Spooks decides he wants to go over the Raptor wall as an example, and then it doesn't really matter what composition you have because at the end of the day, the better team fighters win. And we're getting closer and closer to that stage whilst the slight edge is given to the Chiefs. Well, it's only an edge. Well, Swift is 16 now. Teleport back up. This looks a whole lot better with the banner of command creep there in that lane as well. Nautilus going to go answer, but not even he can really clear that creep out easily. Swiper, though, trying to defend this as four members of Detonation Focus Me have grouped up for this top lane turret. That's going to go down, it looks like, although getting awfully low. Seras may be threatening a dive. He jump throws out the lantern. Caitlin should be able to clear that nicely with the hurricane. But the Chiefs hold on to that tower for now. Yeah, they clear the wave. And everything resets once again. You have to keep in mind that the teleport on Swiffer is the only reason he's bottom. But he's also hit his point of power. And this is where, if you try and siege a Caitlyn, the game can be prolonged. <laughs> Inevitably. Look at those cupcakes. And he's open to bakery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Dragon up as well, but team's playing topside right now because Baron's probably a little bit more important. Midway, midway pushed in by Swiffer, so a bit of pressure that has to be answered there for Detonation Focus Me. That should give Chiefs the ability to get either some vision down or a recall in. They'll opt for a shop this time around. So they do have some money to go and spend. Hanging onto the Dragon from TFM though. Chiefs thinking about taking it. Wouldn't mind a second one here. Well, speaking of the Caitlyn Cupcakes, rather, Cupcakes yep. before as Cup well. Caitlin. Yeah, Cup Caitlyn. People don't actually know you're meant to max at second over the queue. Everyone puts it into the net. And it gives you more damage. And five of them. Yes. Look at the control that they had over that dragon as well. The entire choke point covered in cupcakes. Look like at an eight-year-old kid's birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> dragon does go to the Chiefs, though, which actually is going to help their potential siege. Although this game, again, is being played on some pretty thin margins. Chiefs are powering up, but Detonation Focus me shown that they can fight well 5v5. Swift, though, still being a nuisance here in the bottom lane. Banner of Command Creep has worn off. But uh, still pressure there as Udipon once again has to come down and answer it. Yeah, and I'm going to say there's only like 30% CDR inbuilt currently in Swift's kit. It's not at his max amount. It's unlucky. 10% <laughs> off Cassidy being level 17, however. I think he's the highest level in the game. Still really haven't seen a massive impact from him. No, nope, probably needs his onions maybe, but... There's the banner creep back up. So for really just a, a different sort of split pusher. It's kind of funny he's not playing Zed, actually. Yeah, he's not a fundamental style of split pusher at the moment. He's very quirky in the way that it's designed at the moment. He can't fight Udipon and kill him. He just wants to keep himself down here, perhaps. I don't know, just be a nuisance and give availability to Swiper, who can then either 1-3-1 or, or join with the team and actually be the tank at fight sieges. All right, so things are looking better for the Chiefs. So it's focus me. They are grouping around the Baron. They might even start it here. Who have a pink ward in the area. 
Ejim has to check it. He's going to make it angry. Catch a pretty big chunk of damage, actually. I feel like Catch A clicks everything. <laughs> he just randomly decided to attack it as it got angry. <laughs> Ready, pushing out this wave, though. Last Whisper is now here, so damage is starting to really come out. Hook lands, but would have hit Eternal. Probably not who you want. That's actually a big deal, though, Pastry Time. There are two Last Whispers on both respective AD carries. And there's no Zonias available, though for both mid laners. Swift has just got his yeah, take that that's back. actually huge. That is a big power point where the Chiefs could look to team fight above the prowess of that of Cyros and DFM. Because they can kill the Lissandra quicker than they can kill the Cassidy potentially. And Raider even had more than that. Goes back and gets Lord Dominic's regards actually finished. So he is really strong at this stage of the game. Pretty much built up. Just needs to upgrade that QSS. But Donation Focus Me, they actually are starting the Baron. The Chiefs will scrying up down. They do know what's happening. They need to get in. This is their time to fight. Yeah, Chiefs need to try and pick a fight that is effective for them right now. They can't get engaged on. Swift looking for a flank. Unipon though has found the way in and Spooks forced to bot the ulti defensively. He's going to get out towards the cast and his Radius cutting away, but Unipon They're uses split. all the ultis down and Radius down. Egypt is going to go down as well. Detonation, focus me. Stay together as five and pick up another two kills. Yeah, that was completely split from the Chiefs roster. Three people below, two people above. Not how you want to execute a team fight. That's going to be the Baron started again. Only Swiper and Swiffer to contest this one. We'll see what they do. Probably not enough here from the Chiefs to try and contest. Eternal might be actually a pick they can get. He's got no ulti. Swiffer's going to kill him. That's one Baron buff gone, but they of course can't steal it. Xerost is a squishy member, so they do need to move as a unit here, Detonation. Focus me. And get themselves out safely, but they get that Baron. And they get themselves the gold lead. Once again. Just going to push mid lane, so it might take a turret as a trade here, but... Just really confused. Yeah. You don't two-man into a choke point as well, like they walk towards the Raptors against an Alistar Nautilus. I think it's just because Nautilus had the better flank. Like, he actually split the team up. Well... An awkward fight there from the Chiefs. Does give Baron over to Detonation. Focus me. The good news, I guess, is that the Chiefs come is pretty good at... Uh, stalling out a Baron buff. They can be very annoying in side lanes. Okay, one places traps. Yeah. Invite them to walk into the gauntlet. The cupcake gauntlet. <laughs> it's not the best news though. Detonation Focus Me have a good opportunity to really break open this game that stayed even still at this particular stage. It's about, what, 1,500 approaching 2K for DFM as far as their total gold lead goes. Yeah. Catch, by the way, went Bloodthirster, so he is very big. Not sold on the item, but... He's got his life He's still. a carry. Yeah. Instead of Death's Dance, he's decided that he wants to do more damage. It's not that bad of a decision. It just means that he's the one that's doing more damage, and he'll be taking more of it anyway. Ready to Still strong. So we're actually looking for that Void stuff. So his six items will almost be finished soon. Ready to getting closer. Swiper getting tankier. All the elements are here for both sides. Even though Mikhail's there for regions, actually a nice pickup that he does just get. A double Frozen Heart for DFM, like... What, almost 40 minutes into this game, dragging up in a minute. It is just execution, I think, at this point. And the Chiefs have shown that right now, they've not been able to execute. That's a battle of which jungler gets caught out first at the moment. It's a sad reality of this, right? Like, Catch gets caught out, Chiefs win a fight. Spooks twice in a row gets caught out. DFM with both of those respective fights. At the end of the day, they've just got the team fighting composition. They've got more crowd control on this Japanese side. And they've actually successfully been able to defuse any aggressive move maneuvers out of the Chiefs, and they've brought it back in their favor entirely. Well, that tier two is not defensible, so the Chiefs will lose it. Detonation focus me, go up five turrets to two, as they may be looking top for a tier two, although a slow push has been started, so it's pretty annoying for DFM, who are going to have to attend to that if they want to take out another uh, tier two turret. Sarah Slow going to skate his way over to the blue buff. He'll take that down, and it'll be a nice little buff for a potential fight. Dragon up soon as well. That's probably the next breaking point of this game. But the Chiefs, I don't think they can afford to fight for it. Baron buff may make them a little too strong, given that they are behind. Only a little bit. I think it comes down to execution. Catch is actually full carry. Like we said he was yeah. full carry with a bloodthirster. Oh my god, execution is calling. Here we go. Yeah, full, full carry. Dragon goes to DFM though. Chiefs not in position to even look to contest for it. They do have to wait this Baron buff out. Swiffer is going to continue. Running interference here in top lane. He needs his Void Staff. They can't really fight until he has a Void Staff. That's the massive thing. I just, like, they are struggling to get anything done at the moment because it was even mentioned their engage just barely exists. It's a Maokai flank, potentially onto the back lane, or it's a Thresh hook onto the right target. 
They need to try and execute impeccably, whereas you can kind of just rinse and repeat if you're a DFM. One hook misses or one person doesn't get the stun, try again. You've got an Alistar pulverized, try that again if it doesn't hit the first time, restart it all over again. Like, it's just rinse and repeat. Chiefs have got delicate ways of getting in. They do, and they've got strong carries, but they have to get them into the right spots. And Swiffer will collect a big uh, wave of farm in the bottom lane. Should be able to pick up Void stuff soon. Actually went back for it, but I think it was just a home guard teleport opportunity because he didn't spend that gold. Can't be there for too long, though. DFM have not broken the base just yet, though. And looks like Baron Buff has actually dropped off. So we'll see what the Chiefs want to do here. Maybe a catch, but... Seros does get out of the way. The Chiefs with not enough vision to maybe pick a fight there, despite Seros being top lane, but does have his TP, of course. Yeah, everything's just kind of hit this really tense moment where Chiefs have recognized they don't have control, but they still need to try and find ways to get back in the game. DFM are slow moving around the map, securing that control. Oh. <laughs> that was a wall that Udupon hooked into. The struggle street for Udupon there. Chiefs, though. Do lose that turret, 6-3 to two, uh, six to three now, sorry, in turrets, as Detonation Focus me have gotten all the outers and all the tier twos. That's a good amount of gold, but once again, this late into the game, we're not really looking at gold as the big deal breaker. Once Void stuff's up for Swiffer, Chiefs are pretty, mu are pretty much done with their itemization. And Detonation Focus me are all stocked up as well. Six item Lucian right now, six item Caitlyn. And even Graves actually is pretty much done with Seros shortly there as well. So, Baron up in two minutes. Definitely our next point to look at here. And just remember how important this game is for the Oceanic team in particular to make the playoffs. ZFM, I don't think they're actually able to, whereas the Chiefs need to win this game and the other game that they have later to even have a chance. Chunk onto Eternal though by Swiffer. Seros looking for a play, goes in, but Swiffer is going to take the Lantern. They're going to re-engage in. for it though. And now Spooks is here. Udipon is going to chase Swiffer, but Azonis is going to prevent oh, him from being hooked. Caught. Swiffer, though, can't really get out. He will flash and rift walk away. The Chiefs may have successfully disengaged, but Udipon's going to lead a hook. And this is a neat. Eternal goes back in, but Raider QSS flashes out of the way. Hook's going to re-land in, though, but the Lantra Spite's going to pop up, and Swiffer is going to get into the back line and chunk out Sarah. Look at Raider. Goes back in, but he can't get him, but Raider has gotten that first kill. Still firing away. The damage is there. Seros is down, and they're still trying to kite it out, but Raider dies. And that was a crucial pick they couldn't lose. And once again, Spooks misuses his ultimate when Radio was full health to not really save anybody. All he did was keep Eternal alive. This is clever from Spooks, but I don't know how clever it's going to be when Nautilus is available and there are minions in the top wave. And this is a very long period of time where DFM will most likely be at least able to break the base of the Chiefs. They fumble the execution one more time. Yeah, so if I haven't used that Zonias, it was a perfect re-engage onto Seros. But he died before the stasis wore off from Lissandra. Detonation Focus Me will break the base here. But like, Swiffer could have altered the Nautilus hook. Like, that's a thing on Cassidon. But he chose the Zonias then flash out and then repeatedly gets himself in a poor position where they can capitalize on him not being there. And what they do instead of hitting the flank is hit the front line knowing that he's just used his ultimate like four times to get out. If he wants to get back in, it costs all of his mana bar. Well, Baron's up. That's a huge issue. Yeah. Actually, might be an issue for DFM. Chiefs are all back up. They could look to maybe swipe a quick Baron away, but looks like everyone's reset here. So unlikely. Seros will quickly deal with this wave. Does have TP ready, so no problems there. And the Void stuff done for Swiffer was the other thing. He now has it, but he did not have it before. Yeah. Not sure it made enough of a difference, but it would have made some. Potentially not in that fight, but it may have, and it's very hard to say. I will say, though, that the LJL team, when it comes to their focusing in team fights, the exhausts have been impeccable. Their crowd control has been great as well. It's all on to Raider. He keeps actually put being himself, like putting himself in a position where he can get hit by these low-range spells and low-range engages. Well, did a lot of damage in the last fight, but it wasn't enough. You can see the power of Caitlyn. I like the Fura enchantment on the boots as well. So just going to make sure he can kite even further. If the carries live, Radius should take over a team fight. But Denation Focus Me have plenty of threats and one massive tank. So there's no summoner spells for this team fight. They are sparing at best. But the Baron has definitely been started. Oh, it's and so it's low. getting low yeah. really quickly. 4k health down already. Swiffer TP'd in. They're going to try and pick a fight. Eternal does pop his ulti, but DFM can re-engage now. The Chiefs. My fancy and engage here. They do want the engage. They have to look for something though and have to be careful. Catch as well. 
Still pretty tanky. Seros in. Doesn't follow through, though. And DFM actually might just get away with that. Yeah, the Chiefs draw a line in the sand, essentially, in that river with the five traps and say, come at us. But DFM don't need to take that. They've got the Baron buff. They have control of the top lane inhibitor. The Chiefs, whilst they're pushing, remember the time bomb that is going to be those top lane super minions currently already threatening the base. And dragging up in 10 seconds is also an issue. Everything's just a little off in the timing here for the Chiefs. And Detonation Focus Me have played very calm League of Legends today. And it's really paying off for them. Playing the map smart, not getting too aggressive. And team fights have been on point as well. They're playing the same game. Yeah. The one's just executing better because it comes to the crunch. That crunch being the team fight. Every single time we've seen the LJL team actually come out on top. Well, again, oh, good luck. Don't look too much at the gold. <laughs> Is it not going to matter too much? Yeah, that yeah, he gave up on that creep. minion. Causing issues. <laughs> I like the exclamation mark thing. So, like, this is a problem. <laughs> He's, he literally left that one minion to go. He's like, run free, super cannon. Clear the next wave by yourself. I will take out your friends. Well, <laughs> it's a bit sad, actually. It's having a battle. It's having a real go. Like, it's frozen that wave. <laughs> oh, he died. Rip. He was too young. What was that, like 12v1? It's not very fair. That was probably only six, I think. The next wave's coming now. Alrighty, yeah. He got ganged up on, though. It's yeah. Still bullying. <laughs> Damn, Say no to bullying. Correct. Thank you, Super Steve. minions. Important that are message. Empowered. Yeah, these are an issue. Swiffer can clear them, but does sort of have to address the. Uh, Five members of DFM that are looking to continue pushing and get aggressive. Chiefs really back against it once more as the Baron was picked up. They're all still full items though, Pastry Time. Like, we're looking at this team fight. Everyone's still reasonably similar in their power. And once again, we're just looking to how they start these fights up. I actually like that hook. Takes out the Baron up cannon. Vision going to get cleared here as well. Super still pushing in though. Chiefs not out of the woods just yet. DFM going to keep moving in. That turret dies instantly to a Lucian auto. Swiper claps his hands. Chiefs want to engage. Raider caught though by Judapon. Gets himself out of the way, but the fight's still there. Saros massive ulti there in the choke point. Gets onto everyone. The Lamps just bite down. But Detonation Focus Me still moving forward. Swiffer just can't get a kill. In fact, Zeros crits his face off and he dies. Swiper going to go down there as well as Raider doing everything he can to try. But he's not going to be enough. Eternal's going to take him out. A wonderful exhaust and four kills. And that should be Detonation Focus Me taking the game. And that is most likely, yeah, definitely going to be game for Detonation Focus Me. They've shown up on this day, day number four. And they've given it to the Chiefs roster. And they've most likely ruined their opportunity at playoffs at all. I think they need a lot of things to break their way, but Detonation Focus Me will play spoiler today. The Chiefs could not execute for the team comp, and Detonation Focus Me take a very good looking game. And it felt like it was there. They had all of the tools available to them, everything that they could have wanted to try and fight the game. But what they were missing was crowd control. They just did not have any way to get into the fight. They had no way to start the fight besides the Maokai. And they wanted Detonation Focus Me to come at them. That's exactly what they wanted. Yep. And so the LJL team just walk over them. It's one of those things where if you're ahead and set up for objectives with that comp with the Kindred, I think you're probably very well set up to try and take the game. As a result, though, they got a little bit behind. The execution just wasn't really there. And uh, Detonation Focus Me pick team fight after team fight and consistently win. The Chiefs, they had the items at some point to try and take these fights, but Detonation Focus Me just said 5v5, and every time they executed better, every single team fight. And like there was multiple things as well, though, that really came up as big issues to me. Number one, getting caught out. They yes. actually pulled their best LJL impersonation off that game. It's a sad thing to say, but time and again, Swiffer got caught out split pushing in the top lane. He was not familiar with where they were moving on the map, did not have vision. They decided that they wanted to actually push aggressively on that next wave. He dies twice. Swiper did the exact same thing on more than one occasion, and Spooks did it on more than one occasion, which caused team fights where the Lamb's Respite was blown early. Lots of big mistakes in positioning from the Chiefs. This is a reoccurring trend, though, throughout the entire tournament from this team that has made the LJL team capable of even taking it to a team that scales better than them. Yeah, and on the other end, honestly, very clean from uh, Detonation Focus Me. Probably the cleanest game they've ever played. They're playing around the map well. Catch did get caught a few times there, but I think he actually adjusted pretty well. And finally, everyone fires away. It was a fairly straightforward comp for them to 
uh, execute on, but you still got to play good League of Legends at the end of the day. It was a 45-minute game, but DFM just looked in complete control. Yeah, and everything else aside, they did play great League of Legends. They played the map well. They made decisions smartly. When they went for the Barons, it was the right call. They got it at the right time before Chiefs could react. Any hesitation there could have actually been a fight where they had thrown the game, but they didn't this time around. I think they've come in today. They've learned from what happened yesterday, and they've built on it and improved. Yep, and again, they pretty much just playing spoiler, but they are looking good there. Uh, Detonation focus me again picking up a wing we'll see how they end their tournament i believe they can't quite make playoffs mathematically but again still looking to finish their tournament strong the chiefs they are looking for pretty much a miracle at this point i think they can make it if they win and things break their way but it is uh it is not really in their hands at this point yeah that kind of wasn't today either so they need intz to lose both of their games and have the head-to-head -head by winning their last yep. game and that is a difficult thing to execute on i believe it's against isirus yes so there is a last-ditch effort on the assumption that the stars align for them and the teams that they need to lose do. But that's all it is. It is just really kind of crossing your fingers. They still have to play their game. They still have to win their last game as well to have a chance. And the Chiefs, unfortunately, they were looking to start the day with a whole lot of hope. But that composition, it felt, again, I said it, a little bit more on the Civil Rise spectrum and a little less on the Lissandra Alistar. Chiefs, when they just don't have engaged, they try and get maybe a bit too fancy once again. They made all the right moves, but again, just... Not crisp enough. And you, with that comp, you must execute perfectly. And Carbon said it in the pregame when we were talking about this. You have to put engage on Swiffer or Ejim. The hook, it's not reliable engage. You need to have something different, like even just capitalize with an Oriana shockwave to follow things up. I don't know, just default to what works. Well, didn't work that game. Detonation focus. We do take a very nice looking one as we we'll continue coverage of the IWCI. Don't go too far away. The coverage continues.